In this video, we are going to learn how to save data to a database using Entity Framework Core in a Blazor web app in .NET 8. And we'll use the edit form component in Blazor to accept input data. This video is in continuation to a previous video that you see on screen. So please watch that first if you haven't already done so. Let's add a method to the iBook repository interface for performing the create operation. So let's say task add async book bring in the namespace simple book catalog dot domain dot entities and call the parameter book. Let's implement this method in the infrastructure project. So go to the infrastructure project and open the book repository class and implement the interface. Now say context dot books dot add book and await. Notice we have the async modifier added here. Context dot save changes async. Now let's work on the presentation layer. So go to the simple book catalog project and expand the components folder. First let's make some changes to the main layout component. So expand the layout folder and double click main layout dot razor. Now remove the sidebar div with its navigation menu and also remove the top row div and let's set only the padding top for this article here. So set it to PT5. And since we are not using the nav menu component, let's go ahead and delete that component and expand the pages folder and delete all the components inside that folder. Now let's add a new razor component which will contain a form to add a new book. Right click the pages folder and select add razor component. Name the component add new and click add. We want this component to be a routable component so that it can be accessed via a URL. So let's set the page directive at the top. So say add page slash add dash new. Now if we run the application and navigate to slash add dash new, we can see the add new heading that was present on our component. We don't need the heading, so let's remove it. Now let's set the text that's displayed on the title bar of the browser window or the browser tab by using the page title component. So say add new book. In the code block, let's define a public property of type book. This book entity is present in the domain layer. So let's bring in the namespace simple book catalog dot domain dot entities. Normally, we wouldn't want to reference the domain entities directly in the presentation project. Rather, we want to use a view model. But for this demo, I'll stick with the domain entity. Let's put the using directive in the imports.razor file so that we don't have to import it in every razor component. Going back to the add new component, let's call the property book and instantiate it as well. Now let's create our form. Here, create a div with the bootstrap class row and justify content center. And inside that, create a div with the class called six Let's use the edit form component to create our form. Set method equals post because this form will post to the server. Every form needs to have a name. So set the form name parameter to add book form and set the model parameter to the book property we just created. And lastly, turn off auto completion for the form by setting auto complete equals off. Now inside the edit form component, create a heading with the text add new book. Then create a div with some margin bottom. So say div class equals mb3. Define a label element with for set to title and class form label. The text of that label should be title. And then let's use the input text component with id set to title and use a bind dash value razor directive attribute setting it to book.title and set the class attribute to form control and shadow none. Copy the entire div and paste it below three times. Now for the second label element, let's set the for attribute to author and set the label text to author and also set the id attribute of the input text to author and bind value razor directive attribute to book.author. For the next label, set the for attribute to publication date and set the text to date published. 
Now instead of input text, let's use input date. So change input text to input date and set its id attribute to publication date and set bind value to book.publication date. Now inside this div, let's remove the input text component because we want to use input select. Set the for attribute of the label to category and set the label text to category and below let's use the input select component and set its id attribute to category set bind value to book.category and finally set the class attribute to form control shadow none now let's set a default option for this input select component so inside the input select component define an option element with value set to 0 and set the content to select category. Next, we want to loop through each member of the category enum. So let's use the for each loop. Say add for each var category in enum dot get values and pass in type of category. Now this category is present in simple book catalog dot domain dot enums namespace. So let's bring that namespace in. Now we can put that using directive in imports.razor file. Now go back to the add new component and inside the for each loop define an option element with its value set to at category and set its content to at category dot to string. Finally, we'll create a div with a class mb3 and inside that let's define a button element with its text set to submit and class set to btn btn primary shadow none following this div let's use the data annotations validator component which enables form validation and lastly use the validation summary component to display a list of all errors now when the button is clicked the form will post to the server so let's use the on valid submit parameter of the edit form component and set it to add book down in the code block create a private async method that returns a task and call it add book now inside the add book method we want to be able to access the form data so let's set the supply parameter from form attribute on the book property now once we do this the book property will be supplied from form data and then we can use the book property inside the add book method now we want to save the book and we already have a repository for that. So inject ibook repository, bring in the namespace simplebookcatalog.application.interfaces and call it repository. Put the using directive in inputs.razor file and go back to the add new component. Also, once we perform the create operation, we want to redirect the user to a new page. For that, we need to use navigation manager so let's inject navigation manager, call it navigation, then scroll down and inside the add book method, say await repository dot add async and pass in book, then navigation dot navigate to, let's pass in a slash to go to the root of the app. And since we are injecting iBook repository, we need to register the book repository service. So open solution explorer, go to program.cs and here say, builder.services.addscoped and for the type arguments pass in ibook repository bring in the namespace comma book repository and bring in the namespace for that as well now let's run the app first let's demonstrate an important feature of blazor in dotnet 8 called static server rendering right click the page and click inspect and go to the network tab and navigate to slash add dash new. We can see that the component and all other assets got rendered from the server. So this is called a static server rendering. So we have our form with all the elements, but there's an issue with the select list here. We have signs as a default option. Rather we want select category as a default option. We'll fix that in a bit. Let's submit the form without entering any data. Click the submit button. We see a list of all the validation errors with their default error messages. Now go back to Visual Studio and go to the add new component. For this input select component, 
we have the select category options value set to zero. But if we go to the domain project and expand the enums folder and open the category enum, we see by default the enum members have their values starting from zero. That's why we see science as a default option selected. So let's set science to one and expand the entities folder and go to the book class, decorate the category property with the enum data type attribute, pass in type of category and set the error message to please select a category. So when the user does not select a category, this error message will be displayed. Likewise, let's set an error message for the title property when a value is not supplied. In the required attribute, pass in error message equals please provide a title. And for the author property, let's set the error message to please provide the author's name. Now let's run the app and navigate to slash add dash new. We can see our form and we have select category as a default option. And if we click the submit button, we see our custom error messages. Now let's demonstrate another feature of Blazor in .NET 8 called enhanced form handling. Right click the page and click inspect and click the network tab and clear the network trace and reload the page. Once again, we see all the assets getting downloaded from the server. Now watch the loading spinner here. Once I click the submit button, we can see a small blip and on the right hand side here, all the assets got downloaded from the server once again. So this means that we're not taking advantage of enhanced form handling. By default, enhanced form handling is disabled. So let's go back to Visual Studio and enable enhanced form handling by setting the enhanced parameter of the edit form component to true. Now run the app, right click the page, click inspect and click the network tab and navigate to the add new component. And once again, look at the loading spinner when I click the submit button. We see there is no blip occurring this time. So here on the right hand side, we can see that instead of returning all the assets from the server, a fetch request was made by blazor.web.js for the add new component and only that component was rendered and the UI was updated. Finally, let's test our form. Enter some data and click the submit button. If we wait for a while, it will navigate to the root URL and since we don't have a page for that endpoint, we get an error for not for response. Let's go back to Visual Studio and go to view SQL Server Object Explorer and open the simple book catalog database and right click the books table and say view data. We see that a record got inserted into the database. So that's it for this video. Hope you found the video useful. Thanks for watching.